Lisa. So, uh, dear presenters, chairs, and all attendees, wherever you are, I'm sure that there are some participants uh, who are coming in person in the room in Bali. So welcome to the grand launching and the, the introduction of Indonesian Urban Studies Association at uh, WPSC APSA Bali 2022. We realized that some of you might be in Europe, for example, like Abdul Malik Simons in the middle of the night, uh, Mr. Um, Mrs. Pratiwi in, from Germany, and also in Bali this morning, US, Asia, or other places. So good evening, morning, and afternoon for all, for all of you. My name is uh, Bobby Rahman. Uh, like Riza said that I'm the chair of the Indonesian Urban Studies Association and currently work in ITERA. Uh, this morning, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Ayusa and of, on behalf of other Indonesian Urban Studies Association initiators and fellows, I'm honored to be appointed to open and represent Ayusa's event to guide and allow you to know more about Ayusa. As well as uh, to open this roundtable discussion, our initiative to launch our organization. So the Ayusa aims to bring together uh, researchers, practitioners, observers, students, interested in planning, studies, research, or practices in the Indonesian context. For your information, uh, the members of IUSA are expected to come from various backgrounds, disciplines, both domestically or internationally. So long as uh, they are interested in studying and applying uh, their knowledge of urban and regional planning issues pertaining to Indonesia, they are welcome. Aisha was uh, initially established in May 2020. Uh, actually, back then, Aisha was founded uh, based on the grid potential possessed by uh, researchers and practitioners, particularly those who work in planning and take many topics about Indonesia. But unfortunately, they have not been, uh, been accommodated, gathered in a scientific association. So, in addition, uh, we would like also at the objective of ISA is also to strengthen uh, research and implementation processes in the planning field uh, for sure to improve various sectors. We also collaborate with other established organizations uh, who are also working in planning, practicing to make it happen. So uh, in this moment, I, I also would like to give you short information regarding the membership and how to be participating in AYUSA. Uh, you can participate as a member of AYUSA uh, by registering and declaring uh, the membership and also filling out the membership form. Uh, and also for, for sure that uh, there is like a fee to be uh, joining in uh, AYUSA members. By joining AISA, uh, you will get opportunities to have access uh, to the membership certificate, close communication with the network of AISA, follow AISA events, and also, this is also important, uh, vote and be voted in our organization. So, uh, in this momentous occasion, uh, coinciding with the World Planning School Congress, Asian Planning School Congress being held in Bali, Indonesia. AISA announced formally uh, its existence and also rings the bell to the, field, uh, to the planning field. Uh, through this good event also, AISA wants to discuss current uh, and future spatial planning uh, issues in Indonesia. So we are honored to have uh, two distinguished professors here. Professor Deden Rukmana, Professor Deli Kudala. Good morning, Professor Deden Rukmana and Professor Deli Kudala from Bali. Uh, they will share us uh, in this roundtable discussion. And also, I would like to appreciate for all five speakers here 
Dr. Abdul Malik Simon, Dr. Galu Idrafa Hasta, Dr. Pratiwi Putri, Dr. Asok Das, maybe who are joining in person from Bali, Dr. Jimat Gimire, who are also uh, already joining with us today. So I would like to appreciate uh, for your willingness to give some thoughts in our roundtable discussion. And don't forget, uh, I would like to thank all participants, organizers, and very special WPSG, APSG organizer for letting us uh, make these milestones, milestones uh, happen. It will be written for sure in the history of Indonesian planning research milestone. And uh, to end this uh, opening speech, maybe, uh, to commemorate this very, very monumental event, we will spend the next 70 minutes discussing the development and progress of special planning and research in Indonesia. Uh, like I said, that uh, it will be led by Professor Deden Rukmana and also Professor Dedikuda. Afterwards, uh, in the next final 20 minutes, so maybe around 10 uh, from Indonesian Central Times, the two chair will lead us to the to read Aisha founding declarations and end it with a, a group photo. So on behalf of Aisha, I wish you have a fruitful discussion to achieve our Nobel goals. So for uh, Professor Deden Rukmana and for, uh, Professor uh, Deli Kudala, the, the next session will be yours. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um... It's uh, three in the morning, so I don't, I don't know how articulate I am going to to be at this at this hour. But um, thank you very much for the for the invitation, and I'm. It is with great uh, gratitude uh, to 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 learn of the work of Ayusa, and uh, very much would like to be supportive of its um, activities going, going forward. Uh, in terms of responding to the question um, about the, the future of interdisciplinary studies in Indonesia, uh, I think that in Indonesia uh, faces both uh, the opportunity, uh, the resourcefulness and the challenges of, it, of embodying um, trajectories of, of urbanization, which um, in some ways are very heterogeneous uh, and thus require uh, ways of putting together different forms of urban knowledge production, which are creative, innovative, and, and daring. Uh, Indonesia not only uh, uh, is the context for perhaps one of the world's largest urban regions in Jakarta, uh, but other forms of urbanization which are much more um, distinct, uh, in some ways unprecedented, particularly uh, in Eastern Indonesia as that region becomes the perhaps one of the, the key centers for what's known as the kind of green extraction economy. Uh, you have forms of urbanization which are much more fluid, much more mobile with the circulation of, of bodies of populations across the East uh, in terms from, from Kupang to Ambon to Sarong. Uh, where you have, you know, a, a lot of people constantly in motion and that motion beginning to develop different forms of, of, of metropolitanization, which are very, very, of course, very different than what one finds in, in cities like, in cities like Jakarta. So how does one address uh, the heterogeneity of different forms of urban life, uh, urbanization processes, um, without simply imposing the kinds of conventional formats of, 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 of urban planning. And here I think there's a, there's a great deal of, of resourcefulness within, within the country itself. I would just like to, to mention um, the courageous work of uh, Rong Rupa, 
uh, in its curatorship of uh, this year's documenta. Mangrupa, an art collective from Jakarta that has long worked in uh, forms of uh, urban expression, urban documentation, uh, took on a, a global role of curatorship under and faced a lot of incredibly uh, banal uh, resistance uh, and has done this with great aplomb, great courage and, and, and great patience and stature. Certainly in the field of urban cultural studies, Kunchi uh, from, from Jogja uh, also has a long track record of, of important work. You have a very strong uh, activist community. Uh, you have, you have uh, I, I think what, 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 what Ayusa can really undertake in a very productive way is how you bring together those different kinds of sites of urban knowledge production from the university, from the activists, from the artists, from the cultural studies point of view, even from the developers point of view, because the developers are in some ways uh, uh, the key sources of, of spatial products uh, affecting the, the built environment. Uh, the activist communities, and if if in some ways that Ayusa could could serve as a kind of critical interlocutor amongst the resourcefulness of knowledge production that Indonesia has, I think it would be uh, this would be an, an, an incredible piece of of work. So uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Abdul Malik, for giving us uh, an update and perspective. And uh, later, uh, I'll move forward first to the second speaker, uh, Ashok Das. He's been in the University of Hawaii at Manua, the U USA. He has been working on topic on community participation and empowerment, slum upgrading, decentralization, and local governance, uh, role of civil society for equitable development and inclusive urbanization. Okay, uh, you give the floor to you, Ashok. Thank you, Padelik. Thank you, Padeden. Um, congratulations to everyone who has been, I mean, who have been instrumental in bringing this idea to fruition and launching Ayusa. I think, um, and I'm incredibly honored and grateful to be to be speaking here on this occasion. Um, and I'm personally very, very delighted to see this happen because like you mentioned, I have worked pretty much most of my life in Indonesia, my research life. And so um, this is exactly, I think what I had envisioned and like Delik mentioned, we have had, I mean, especially with Padid and we have talked about these things for a long time. Um, and uh, like Professor Simon um, just said, there is, I mean, tremendous spirit, creativity, optimism, and a desire to be very inclusive uh, in um, uh, among different institutions and different sort of groups within society in Indonesia. But for some reason, um, there hasn't been as much cohesiveness, I mean, in how actually things, um, get realized or get materialized, you know. So despite having a lot of potential, I think a lot of that potential remains untapped in terms of creating the synergies that can yield, I think, far more effective and far more desirable outcomes in terms of how we manage urbanization and how we shape our cities and how we enable the marginalized and sort of the downtrodden uh, to, to become equal sort of partners in shaping urbanization. So I am very, uh, very, uh, as Delik also mentioned, I have spent most of my research career looking at very neighborhood level as well as local level, city level or sub city level um, um, uh, planning and governance issues. And um, I think Indonesia is very lucky in many ways because of the governance structure and administrative structure it 
inherited in a way because there is there are a few other societies where i mean it is i mean the governance structure formally penetrates i mean so deep into society it it has traditionally been used in ways which are not necessarily the best use of such structures but i think there is great potential there however um there is also a disconnect even within cities for example at the top level governance institutions and planning institutions and the community level institutions right or the role of the community or the potential of the community level neighborhood level organizations is very restricted to doing very few kinds of things and when those things are done well the results are excellent i mean they probably guide the world on how things should be done yet the synergy between the higher levels of government and or in governance also and the lower or the grassroots level is not as strong or integrated as it should be so uh, i am very hopeful because i think uh, your out for planners as uh, those of us in planning um, there are great ideas and we'll keep churning out great ideas but the attainment of those ideas and the realization of ideas are in my opinion as good as the institutions of planning that we have created right so the institutions are not sort of abstract edifices but they are made of real people so if we can change the way the people who inhabit and populate and and embody these institutions if they can better appreciate the challenges the better appreciate the cons constraints and better appreciate uh sort of the innovativeness and courage that's required to overcome these challenges i think that will that will be the tipping point i think and this is where i think ayusa from in terms of the interdisciplinarity that or that term which comes as the first letter in the acronym actually is the most important thing it is not only i think planning that needs to be more interdisciplinary because like i mentioned at the grassroots level community level work like you mentioned i do slum upgrading community empowerment in fact it is it is very interesting that most of those uh kinds of activities have been led by architecture departments traditionally in indonesia not the planning departments even if you look at it today planning departments tend to do macro level work much more than the grassroots level community level work and it's very strange they don't work together in fact those departments even just architecture and planning for instance so making planning more interdisciplinary but also exposing other very very critical disciplines from which planning borrows very selfishly and very wisely <laughs> you know like say sociology political science geography anthropology women studies i mean these are all but i think it is also important for interdisciplinary studies to expose the other disciplines more to the workings inherent constraints and challenges and philosophies and givens that constitute planning as a discipline so i think this is where ayusa has a great role to play in terms of reforming uh, education creating dialogues between different disciplines i mean both within academia and beyond i think don't and in government in academia as well as in society i think so i think i wish ayusa i mean the very best of luck from the i mean from deep down in my heart and this i i wish you a uh, phenomenal success and i think this could prove transformative for indonesian society i think so congratulations once again and thank you for inviting me thank you ashok stay there we will have discussion i think some some important points there but first i will give the floor to uh pratiwi we putri uh but we uh from the university of castle currently germany it's great to see you again after years ago yeah but we uh he she is working on water sanitation informality social innovation social movement and some cr and critical perspectives on planning please but we Uh, Pratiwi, Uwi, can you hear us? Yeah, uh, is it possible to just play the uh, video that I recorded? Maybe by... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, okay. I, I just realized, yeah.
somebody who is kindly okay i want to convey in this event first along with my happiness for the birth of the association i also want to highlight a critic and this is also a self-critic to current academic practice i think it, it is relevant to raise it here as i hope for the association to progressively contribute to science and education. This critique begins with something that might sound too simple and raised to tiny issue, but perhaps it expresses more structural problems. The critique is partly related to the current practice of citation in academic publication. We Indonesian scholars tend to cite scholars from the global north. Even when we do cite on peers of scholars, we do it in a superficial manner, like just mentioning instead of, instead of truly in, engaging. I found myself irritated to read citation that referred to uh, scholars for some descriptive information rather than to highlight their conceptual perspectives. My point is perhaps let us focus on what we can do as an association to treat the global south not only as a source of empirical knowledge, but also as an open laboratory to build theories. I think as an important step, it is crucial to have a reflective collective action among us to really examine what have been published by Indonesian and non-Indonesian scholars about Indonesian cities and regions and launch critical debates written in English and in Bahasa Indonesia to evaluate where we are in the field of Indonesian urban studies. My second point offers one angle for the critical debates. There is much to gain when bringing together peasant studies and development studies. Peasant studies has traditions to discuss about dynamics of agrarian transformation in a way they are critical to the conception of class, gender, and access to land, among others. Publication in Peasant studies provide various critical analytical lens to understand poverty, village to city migration, as well as rural and urban spatial transformations. In peasant studies, in my opinion, scholars have provided concepts beyond the trajectories of Western industrial transformations and engage with diverse historical geographical transformations. If we accept the notion of planetary urbanization in the sense of the term that have been has been developed based on the works of Henri Leveur, or if we accept the political ecologist's account for urban effects beyond cities, I think peasant studies offers much to understand the dead end street of modern development. The intersections with uh, PS and DS uh, are highly fertile grounds for urban studies to harvest, as urban studies is not a scientific discipline to evaluate the failures or success of development in a technocratic manner, but instead a scientific field to be critical about modernity and development in order to understand cities and regions for societal and environmental problem solving. This notion of problem solving, I borrow from policy studies and especially the school of thought of Elena Ostrom. I think by mobilizing this term will guide us from dwelling at the level of jargons. And now I come to my third and last point. There are lacunae in the public service provisions, including public infrastructures like water and sanitation. And this Lacunae have been neglected, but also cannot be effectively addressed by the market and the state. In need for collective actions to fill in this lacunae, it is important to think about resources as commons. If we need to understand the conditions of possibilities for collective actions and for commoning to emerge and to grow, perhaps we need to closely research the forgotten mass. I refer here to the majority. This term is used also a lot by Abdul Malik Simone. The majority that have been left alone to create, creatively meet their basic needs, they can be accounted as the poor and marginalized, the floating mass and unorganized, the informal, the commoners, 
social innovators or the political or you name it. We need to debate all these concepts by referring concretely to the social material practices they endure for solving their own social environmental problems. And perhaps we can think of these practices to over solutions at the larger scale. I stop here and I look forward to our discussions. Thank you, Rami, for preparing the pre recorded uh, session that's uh, very uh, special to us. Let me uh, shift to the other speakers. Uh, okay, uh, to Dr. Junat Gimire, please uh, correct me uh, my spelling from the Iowa State University, the USA. Uh, he has been working on knowledge utilization, science policy interface, climate change adaptation, and resilience and disaster. Please, I'll give the floor to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And my greetings to all my uh, mentors, colleagues, and, and, and friends uh, there uh, in person as well as uh, virtually. Uh, I want to... Uh, highlight few points that I, I, I was listening to Professor Simon and uh, Professor Das and, and others. And I got really fascinated by the issues uh, they, they raised, by the points um, they raised in, in, their, in their address. So uh, my expertise is mainly uh, boundary spanning, uh, knowledge utilization, and uh, science utilization, especially focusing on emerging problems that uh, that uh, uh, compound in the in the um, cities uh, in Indonesia and other parts of the world. So, uh, in this context, I I I hope that uh, the the organization Ayusa will will help us to uh, create really interdisciplinary environment uh, to create uh, kind of like a, a knowledge uh, to address emerging problems in global south, especially related to climate change, uh, disaster, uh, and, and community resilience. And uh, my work mainly Argue, I, I mainly argue that uh, there is no surges of information in our parts of the world. We have enough knowledge production. Either we call about climate change or, or other emerging issues. I believe that we, we have produced enough uh, evidence that they are really uh, creeping in every sectors, uh, including our uh, cities. Now, how you can translate those knowledge into action? That is the main effort lacking. Either we talk about slum upgrading or empowering our youth or empowering our institutions, uh, planning institutions at multiple levels. How we can translate this scientific evidence from the scientific community, from the research community, to, um, to, uh, to, to, to decision making, to policy making, and to interventions. That is the main challenge I believe we have ahead. And I think IUSA will be a wonderful platform to bring uh, knowledge to action. I want to uh, uh, kind of like refer uh, uh, Professor Friedman's idea. Planning is about knowledge to action. So I think Ayusa will help us to materialize that. And I wish you uh, best of luck and, and uh, really remarkable progress to uh, expand the interdisciplinarity of research and planning intervention in Indonesia and beyond. Uh, and I, I will stop here and I'll be happy to participate in follow-up uh, discussed. Thank you.
Uh, Mr. Delic, we cannot hear you. Okay. Okay, let me uh, repeat it. So the last uh, discussion or uh, speaker here is Dr. Galu Shahbana Indra Pahasta. He is from National Research and Innovation Agency or BRIN of Indonesia. He has been working on city technology society nexus and then transition special global urban networks, urban sustainability and, and post-colonialism. Okay, Gal Pagalu, please. Where, where is? Okay, should somewhere here. But <laughs> Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Pak Delik. Um, it's very an honor for me to have this kind of opportunity to, to be able to, to share my thoughts here. And uh, I would like to emphasize a couple of points that actually are already mentioned by our uh, previous speakers. The first one I would like to, um, first of all, to, to, to position three uh, position for, of, of science. The first one is science for science, science for policy, and the third one is science for, uh, for uh, community. And this is, this, this three position, I think is important position that should be considered by Aisha in the way that, for instance, as already mentioned by, by, by Ami, that we have kind of problem in doing research. I mean, global schools doing global uh, doing, uh, research in, uh, global south cities because as Ami already mentioned that we mostly have done this in a very superficial way in just in describing or inciting what we thought engaging more on the the conceptual uh, discussions uh, uh, brought by the you know scholars from the global north I'm, I'm not against that this kind of way but there is a lack of you know engagement there, there's this lack of critical discussions that we 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 propose we are doing our research, and that creates problem not only for science but also for policy, because um, based on my ten years experience in you know, kind of uh, assessing different kind of notions uh, of cities that have been, um, uh, you know, uh, took by the, the the governments as concepts of cities, for instance, smart city and also a green city uh, and then creative city. The problem is that most of these, uh, these notions are adopted, adopted in very, very art artificial way in the way that there are, they tend to be normalized practices in the global north. And as pa Abdul Malik Simon already mentioned, uh, Indonesian urban uh, or ir 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 Indonesian urban initiations have different kind of trajectories, rich in characteristics, and should be different from those experienced by cities outside Indonesia or outside the global north, outside the global south in, in general. So to make a very good and relevant policy, it's set with a very good in producing science. And that is the problem that we are facing now in, in terms of knowledge production and how it will be connected to to, to actions. That is, that, that is the first point that I would like to make. So how we should create a platform, not only to uh, produce and reproduce knowledge related to urban studies and regional studies, but also how we could also uh, communicate and make a kind of mutual, mutual dialogue with, with policymakers and also with communities so that the grounding practices of this kind of traveling policies or traveling notions would be adopted in a very, very contextual manner so that it could create more benefit to the policy and also to the community itself. I think for now, that's my uh, main two points that I would like to share. Thank you. And I give the, the time and also the floor back to Pak Delik and Pak Deden. Thank you, Pak Galo. So before we have an open discussion and maybe some of you might also share your thought, how can we Built up IOSA together. I, I will. Uh, I will have some uh, critical or uh, very. Uh, I think foundational question that can trigger our discussion as well to some of the speakers. First to uh, Professor Simon. 
Uh, we have been working on uh, various contexts of the global south, I guess, in the past, uh, in during your research, and 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 probably Indonesia. Given uh, although Indonesia is uh, one of the let's say the largest country in the world, I mean in terms of population at least, and it has some uh, geographical uniqueness. But uh, I think uh, some of us might think that Indonesia is uh, not so much represented in the global stage, uh, let's say in the academic uh, wise, and also in, in, in let's say global policy and, and politics as well. So uh, maybe I, I would like you to, uh, you probably you have some thought, how can uh, organization or networks such as IUSA can play a role to up level of this, uh, contribution of, uh, let's say, Indonesia as a uh, laboratory of urban uh, that can be uh, also uh, contribute to, to uh, at the global stage uh, much better. Let's say, like China, uh, we have been, uh, there is a lot of work or contribution of uh, experiments from China or probably India. Probably how, how Indonesia can also play such a role, Professor Simon, through Ayusa especially. What can we do? But I, I think here uh, this this uh, this returns to Ami's point about uh, citational citational practices. Um, I mean, the one of one of the key things about Indonesian urbanizations is that, as I said before, that it encompasses such a heterogeneity of different kinds of, of urban trajectories. Um, it is a country that includes both Jakarta and Jayapura. Uh, and these are very two very different uh, histories and situations of, of, of urban, urban processes. I think you know a, a lot of the research has been centered on Jakarta uh, primarily, um, and I think Ami's point about you know thinking through the sort of interaction between uh, urban and and peasant studies would enable a much broader sense of of the different forms of, of city making uh, and urbanization across the across the across the country. So within Indonesia, when I'm saying one can find in some ways points of reference to most of the trajectories of urbanization across the across the South. And to be, I mean, you know, Indonesia was at once the site of Bandung, was once the site of really important South-South interchanges. Uh, and I think those South-South interchanges, not only as a kind of citational practice, but as a way of exchanging and constituting knowledge uh, would be really, uh, would re really be significant. And that, you know, it, it is primarily non-Indonesians like myself who get, get elevated in terms of this role of, of in some ways being the kinds of conveyors of these kinds of connections when uh, within, within um, Indonesia itself, there are many Indonesian scholars that are most capable of, of, of doing this. So in some ways this, refers to Ami's notion of citational practice, but citational practice not simply being what you list in your article, uh, but how you think through the kinds of everyday, uh, the everyday processes of, and I just, I want to just make one quick point, which, which Ashok mentioned before about the governance structures. One, one thing that I, I, I found uh, having sort of tagged along with many Balora in Jakarta is that there are some who really are the, the repositories of an intense kind of comprehensive knowledge of a very detailed, uh, detailed things. I remember tagging along with the Balur of Tangatingi at, 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 at one point, who spent every night going to different meetings, associations, 
discussions, we don't make use of that, you know? In fact, it oftentimes, as Ashok was saying, doesn't resonate into the... So in some ways, this becomes a metaphor for the ways in which a certain urban resourcefulness and knowledge gets blocked by particular kinds of administrative structures of, of conveyance and deployment and use. And I think that if Ayusa can, in some ways, unblock those kinds of channels, it also addresses its position globally as a kind of more important interlocutor in South-South exchanges. Thank you, uh, Professor Simon. Uh, the second important question probably is I would specially ask to Ashok. Uh, you have been uh, working on uh, in, in the field with some of the professional uh, profession from various profession in your research and 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 while while uh, previously I was asking about Indonesia as a perspective as an object of studies now thinking about Indonesia as the agent you know the scholars the profession the policymakers uh, uh, and 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 what what have you shown us well that there they are some kind kind of monopoly when we're talking about uh, urban studies in Indonesia, maybe some, some are pointing more toward architecture or probably planning. How about other discipline? Because uh, uh, urban, uh, the urban city is, is, is uh, uh, as, as we have proposed, it, it aims to be more multidisciplinary. And how can we uh, cross the boundaries with, uh, with different disciplines? And I think that that's one of the gaps that probably in the future I use I can play a role in 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 working on that. Can you share your thought? Thank you. Um, Delic, um, I think there's tremendous potential, like I said, right? I mean, and uh, again, this is going back to the point of sort of a, a sense of this is not just Indonesia, by the way, this, this represents the global south. I mean, scholars, I mean, from the global south or scholars who study the global south, still in order to sort of redeem or justify or claim their space, right, tend to begin by sort of playing obeisance to, I mean, global north scholarship in a way. And then, you know, but oftentimes I think the problem is that you get stuck in those frames, whereas, and it can be very limiting in terms of the sort of the just the range of possibilities that are there. And that is what I think Ayusa could provide. So first of all, I think, you know, just working with the most say important disciplines that shape our cities. Planning is one of them, but I'm a planner myself. I'm an architect turned planner. Um, and I don't think <laughs> are this i mean architecture or planning actually play the most important role you know the most important role is played by say economists you know um policy studies people legal i mean experts and those are the things that kind of i mean those are the disciplines and those are the practices that create the stage for us but i think that is something that needs to be sort of reclaimed in a way right so and it's partly also because, like I said, the other disciplines not being very familiar with what planning can provide and what planning can lead in a way. So first of all, I think just by bridging um, those disciplines within, say, academia, for example, especially at, I mean, the undergraduate level and graduate level, I mean, uh, with students who are um, interested in urban issues and bringing them together. So creating fora and opportunities at conferences. It could be like round tables like this one, for example, on a regular basis, where we try to, we try to get the conversations going among people from other disciplines, right? That's the most important thing. The other thing is also the fact that there doesn't need to be one kind of planning, right? I mean, if we, if we look at Indonesia, I mean, it almost seems like there has to be a kind of spatial planning. There has to be a kind of planning approach. And that is absolutely, I think, the, the wrong way to go about it, right? Especially in a country like Indonesia, as you mentioned, I mean, uh, and uh, Professor Simon has so nicely explained, so diverse and so different that actually there are existing 
very diverse kinds of planning cultures and practices and those are those are necessary i mean by just being different in a way right so uh, i mean i think many years ago there was a book i think that was edited by i think bish sanyal which was which talked about planning cultures of different countries for example i think uh, uh, but Aiden has done a great, and and, and Sonia, Sonia, Sonia Reutemann, and they just published this book, which is on urban Indonesia, which is exposing people to, I mean, the discourses beyond the usual suspect cities, you know, and uh, that on, on similar notes, I think Ayusa can help, I mean, and promote just how planning and urbanization and urban management and cities, I mean, work and function in different parts of Indonesia. That itself will provide scholars I think the sort of the touchstones to take this to the next level by realizing that, wow, there is this much diversity and this much richness in this, and we should promote this. I think that could be the spark in a way, you know, that can stimulate a lot of the kind of things that we are desiring from, I mean, this creation of IUSA, I think. So thanks. Thank you, Asok. Uh, let me continue this uh, discussion session with this uh, discussion and presenters. Uh, from comments uh, of these five presenters, the I think one of the highlights that I note here is that when we have this uh, production of knowledge or the production of knowledge, and then uh, on uh, the other side, uh, there is also uh, yeah government structures, but there is also this connection between what we produce as scholars and then what we can do, I mean, a uh, uh, government can do to, to execute those uh, knowledge. So there is a point here, uh, the connection, knowledge to action. So I like to bring this question to uh, Ami. Uh, so if you notice that we try to get more production of knowledge or reproduction of knowledge. And then we like to get this knowledge more executable. There is an action from this uh, knowledge. So what you can do or what you suggest with this platform to make that connection happen? Thank you. Probably I'd like to refer to um uh education practice that's probably also um a quite important uh in this uh, respect um many many of us are part of you know regenerating new new agencies and uh and there's through education then there's also a transfer of positions i mean I think we cannot expect roles of or critical roles uh, are just an instantiation, right? It is something like roles are created, but it's also to be filled by by the new generations. And I think uh, probably we could start a kind of um, interdisciplinary thesis and this kind of you know production. And I think this is something like should not be too difficult to begin. And uh, I would like to also uh, again stress these uh, practices of 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 uh, uh, kunci like ruang rupa or other kind of of uh, collectives like Rujak or recently I really engage a lot with Jatiwangi Art Factory from Majalengka, for example, uh, during this documenta in Kassel because luckily I'm in Kassel. And you know the the birth of Jatiwangi Art Factory are very interesting because they say. We are not cities, but we are also not village, but they are part of Kabupaten Majalengka. You know, this is something like a given identity to be part of a Kabupaten. But they said we are not a village like in the romantic sheen of village with uh, bodies, with, with beautiful sceneries, but we are like producing uh, roof tiles and we are having lots of uh, women having go, has to go to the Middle East for working as uh, um, uh, domestic labors, and they want to do something, and then they started to have a, a creating a cultural hubs there, and they really do lots of small, small experiments. I think uh, 
uh, Ashok Das has uh, has mentioned about uh, talking about subsidies, uh, neighborhoods, but this is also places of history. You know, history doesn't create itself. History has particular locations, and I think there's a simple uh, a way to address this rural urban dichotomy by really looking at the practices and how people also uh, try to to position themselves and put identities. I think I would stop in here. Thank you, Ami. Uh, my next question is this. Uh, Abdul Malik mentioned about, as we all know, Indonesia is 240 million population and span from Aceh until uh, Papua. And then the point that uh, Abdul Malik mentioned, the heterogeneity of urbanizations. He mentioned about Jakarta, which is mega city of Indonesia, and Jayapura, or maybe Timika, or maybe Ami just said Majalanka, right? So there are so many cities, Indonesian cities, with different sizes. With different sizes also in, uh, imply with different approach, different policy, different way about approaching things. Right. So my next question is for uh, Galo here. Uh, so how do you see this uh, heterogeneity of urbanization in Indonesia, and how should uh, Ayusa reflect on this heterogeneity in terms of uh, knowledge production and also in terms of the uh, connection from knowledge to action? Uh, yes, thank you uh, so much, but then probably I'm going to speak first from the ontological perspective, because this is, I think, one particular point that we could start from, begin with, because sometimes uh, different social schools have different ontological position and it's create conflicts. Uh, and from this point of view, I would like to, for instance, in the, this is my very subjective opinion, but for me, critical realism is, is, is a good way to start with different kind of, you know, things in, this, in, in the way that there exists knowledge created or experienced by global North uh, cities. But we cannot, we cannot fully deny that there are some truths that we can learn from the, those experiences, although we have different kind of heterogeneities. And that's why critical uh, realism is an important point that we acknowledge the general rule of some of a certain social phenomenon, for instance, cities in the global north, that we can actually partly borrow those to understand the context happening in Indonesia. That's uh, my first point. The second point is that uh, I think I also should. Uh, emphasizes here is that we also have to work more, I mean, in collaboration with other uh, social scientists, for instance, as Ashok mentioned, sociologists, anthropologists, because those people, in my perspective, we understand more about the social, special aspects of certain locations, certain space. We planners uh, usually understand uh, things about cities or regions, but in a different way, in more, in, in more technical ways, in more superficial ways, I would like, if I may, I may say that way. So this, this is, you know, it's, 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 it's not that very easy how to collaborate with different kind of scholars from different kind of disciplines, but it may create richness in understanding a certain uh, object that is, you know, planner see it in a simple way, but people from anthropologists or from sociologists background may have different kind of way that could uh, give more understanding on the social context of certain uh, space. And the third one that I would like also to share here, probably most of the stop of studies on cities also uh, tend to focus on big cities and large cities. And this is also mentioned by our colleague, Fikri, uh, when he wrote a paper about Cirebon. 
So actually small uh, and also intermediate and medium uh, urban centers have been neglected in global urban studies. So I think Asia can also start with how we actually define cities or ur cities or urbanizations. This year, I my, my research my research also deal with the urbanization process in rural areas, because in countries like Indonesia, if we speak ur urban urbanization, we do not speak about only sp about large cities, but we also speak about the different characteristic trajectories and massive urbanization happening in, for instance, smaller cities and even in rural regions. I think I have to stop my uh, uh, sharing here. Thank you, Padeden. Thank you, thank you, Galo. Now, uh, last but not least, you not maybe you can have uh, some insight about the same question from me. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Deden. Uh, one thing I, I I want to highlight is uh, packaging of knowledge. So I, based on my research in Southeast Asia, including Indonesia and Vietnam, one big gap we have between uh, practitioners, uh, policymakers, uh, and, and, uh, and, and uh, knowledge, knowledge producers, especially scientific knowledge uh, from different disciplines, is how we package the knowledge and how, how we communicate that to them. Really makes a difference. Uh, uh, the, and and, and uh, diverse institutions, uh, just like uh, all of you are mentioning, has different kind of like need of packaging. Same kind of packaging may not fit uh, to all level of uh, government uh, institutions uh, and uh, either in rural areas or in, in, in villages or large cities, uh, it is important. So I think besides uh, production of knowledge that what I is gonna lead into, uh, it is also important how we're gonna develop some of the knowledge product that can be in the form of uh, uh, training packages uh, or other kind of empowerment packages uh, based, on, based on the knowledge we produce uh, that we deliver to a different institution that will have direct impact on this uh, uh, kind of like knowledge translation from uh, from uh, production side to more to the uh, implementation side. So I think if AISA can also uh, emphasize those uh, translation or knowledge product that can be useful for decision maker, policy makers, and planners a different level, uh, that will be also another kind of niche I can, I, I see uh, that Isaac can contribute. Thank you, Gina, thank you very much. Uh, let's, before we next to Q&A from our audience, let's give all presenters our discussion a round of applause, very good. Okay, uh, so now we have, uh, times for Q&A. Uh, so I like to invite anyone, anyone here in this uh, room or maybe someone who join us uh, online, if you have any insights, any thing that you like to share based on your observation, based on your own research or based on your complaint or anything, right? So how we as organization, Ayusa can can address that, can move forward, uh, scholarship, yes. If you can put, uh, say your name and then. Hi everybody, Jan, Jan Whittington. I'm a professor at the University of Washington in Seattle. And um, my, my question, I have a question to the group um, because clearly you've, you've been, you've been meeting for a while. You've been putting a lot of thought behind the effort to form IUSA and um, from what I gather, you're considering a new stage for the development of IUSA in uh, an expanding membership. So I'm I'm wondering if you have other models of planning school associations that you are you you are taking your clues from. 
so for if you want to consider what impact you want to have, which is clearly dominant in the discussions today, um, I'm wondering if you are thinking about other associations of schools or other other particular organizations that you are taking your clues from because they have very different kind of roles the way they organize and how they influence policy sometimes at the highest levels um, and I, I i want to i'm I, i'm personally curious about um your intent to expand membership so um at the moment it seems to be uh organized around scholars from and in indonesia which is wonderful and uh and obviously a very important way of centering your organization, but I want to understand what, what kind of openings you intend to create for scholars who are interested in Indonesia's, Indonesia's advancement of planning and uh, how, how those folks should be able to participate. Thank you, thank you uh, very much for the question. Maybe I, Oh, you would like to, okay. I have something to say when you want to respond to it. Yes, yes. So let me respond to that because it's also very uh, foundation and very basic that question because so that's why everybody will understand why we are here, right? Uh, of course, the, let me start with the context of this, of, of this uh, uh, organization. Uh, it's a, just a little a group of, of, of I will say doctoral students at the time, and then also just like myself when I was just early stage of my uh, academic career. So when we had that uh, small group, we tried to just get connected to help each other in that group, right? That was back in 2007, so it's been a while, right? But that group is growing uh, year by year, by year by year until today that we come up with some ideas, how we just, not among ourselves, but we like to expand this, to have this uh, desire, right, to expand uh, scholarship on Indonesia. Uh, so that's why we come with this uh, idea I use, uh, and then the membership, of course, the membership is open to anyone. They need to be Indonesian, they can also enrich Indonesianists from around the world, right? Uh, in fact, uh, there was a colleague here in the uh, Congress also approached us at, from Vietnam because he also interested to, to modeling uh, what we have been doing. Uh, yeah, so this is something that uh, we like also to, to pull. So basically the membership is open to anyone, not just for, for Indonesia, but also for Indonesianists or anyone interested in Indonesia. So there's something that we like to make sure that of course uh, everyone is welcome, right? Thank you, Coco. Thank you, Paredes. So um, I would think that first, you know, um, we will need uh, a research agenda in some way, shape or form, right? I mean, it has to, um, and one of which I think um, could be um, definitely, you know, uh, addresses gaps in the literature, you know, in ways that are maybe geo-empirical, right? I mean, yesterday at the book launch, um, you, I think you and Sonia made a, an excellent point. I'll repeat it here that you want to um, publish um, underreported uh, Indonesian cities. Um, Indonesia maybe is underreported in the global context, but there's still cities in Indonesia that are underreported. Um, Abdul Malik uh, pointed out that Jakarta and Jayapura, you know, uh, it's hard to put them in the same bucket other than, you know, conveniently they're both Indonesian cities. Uh, but um, it has very different, um, you know, um, knowledge to offer, right? Uh, it, it addresses different gaps in the literature, I think. Uh, so I think that this is, could be uh, one of uh, our research agenda, right? Um, the second thing is that, well, I guess um, there's always the tendency that, you know, um, uh, in our profession, um, in our discipline that, you know, uh, this research should inform policy. And I think there's definitely that uh, going forward. Um, Indonesia is, um, um, you know, is at the end of the uh, the first, I guess, long-term planning cycle, the 20-year planning cycle, and is about to embark on a 
on the next one, and this is you know post um, uh, reform, right? Um, so I'm not talking about the Repalita like five years planning stage, but this is like the, um, the you know the long term uh, twenty years, and then um, there's a medium uh, five year plan. So, so you know I, I would propose those two uh, for starters, and and the other thing is about expanding members. I think that's a really excellent point. I, I think you know by by this time next year, you know I think um, I use says should probably have a like a booth um, in every uh, you know planning school conferences, right? Like ECSP, and I'm sure there's uh, European equivalents and um, uh, ASOP, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. So so definitely uh, we will need to have a, a booth there and then, and I, I hope that would help expand membership. So I, and I, I totally agree. And this is a, a first a, an opportunity to network and also a platform to publish. Then on that note, that this is my last point. And we need to start recruiting, you know, young and emerging uh, scholars, right? And this is should be a safe space, like you know, um, for them to um, to sort of like um, send their draft for to a um, friendly reviewer, right, of Indonesian studies. I think this should be definitely the forum for that. And I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Goko. So I note here that uh, we need to expand. Our research agenda, understudied uh, cities, especially small cities, long-term planning, expanding membership, and also, of course, uh, getting this publicized in other parts of, of, uh, of the world, like SESP or ASOP or IACP, right? And uh, emerging uh, young uh, scholars. All right, now, uh, yes, I can go. Uh, we need, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. I'm Winnie Astuti from Universitas Plus Maret, uh, Surakarta, Central Java. Uh, I think it is a very good start to develop the Indonesian Urban Studies Association. So uh, for me, it's going to be have maybe two purposes, yeah, maybe. And the first one is for sharing, and the second one is for collaborating, maybe. So for, for sharing, I think we can, as the researcher, we, we can share what we have done in terms of research, activities of academic, of academics like uh, uh, might be a conference or seminar. Also, we can, uh, so with the sharing, we know that uh, how, uh, who, who was the which have the same research interest or the same field of studies, and also uh, we can also like uh, the second one is uh, collaborating. So collaborating in terms of research, so we can uh, do the joint research or joint conference, joint publication, joint book chapter. Everything we can we can join in terms of so we can produce like a thematic thematic books or thematic conference or thematic uh, yeah thematics anything so and also we can collaborate with uh, with uh, other stakeholders yeah like like you, you said before that uh, maybe with the government or with the uh, foundation with the community private sector and other researcher so I think we it's it's a lot to to do with this this forum. So uh, I I think I, I support it very much to to develop this uh, forum. And uh, what I am asking that uh, is that uh, organization for institutions or uh, individual or it can be put individual and institutions because uh, for association of planning school is based on the institutions or school, but maybe in this forum will uh, based on the individual or research group or maybe uh, uh, study research studies or something. So, so that's, that's I'm going to ask. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Winnie Astuti. Bu Astuti, thank you very much for your uh, questions and uh, response. Uh, Yes, of course, it become a very important uh, task for us, right? 
to to continue sharing and collaborating. Uh, of course, uh, you are from Universitas Sebelas Maret in Surakarta, right? So you like to connect it with other uh, scholars in Indonesia or so, uh, around around the world. Yes, that's the the thing that we like to continue. Okay. Uh, in terms of membership, go back also to to the first question. Uh, so uh, we we also model uh, from UAA, you know, Urban Affairs Associations. So in Urban Affairs Association, membership could be institutional and could be also individual. So if you uh, university willing to be part of institutional membership, of course anyone member of that uh, uh, university can join uh, and then part of our activities. But of course, if you or organization or university is not really get to it, but you like to join us, we can also open for um, uh, individual membership. So the model that we, we, we see at this point is, you know, uh, Urban Affairs Association. But of course, as you, as you see here, uh, uh, Abdul Malik Simon is just one example, scholars uh, that from uh, sociology, but across other disciplines. Uh, so this is something that we like also to, to emulate to other uh, 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 members, right? It's not just in planning, but also in other uh, disciplines, interdisciplinary uh, studies. That's why we call it urban studies associations because we we values that uh, interdisciplinary uh, uh, nature of this organization. So we have. Sure. This is just to. Um... John, your question is, I think, great. I mean, just a little bit more background about the genesis. So, I mean, I'm not core, I mean, in the, in you know, but I'm peripheral. And, but I think in the beginning, I mean, the, what um, uh, they didn't mention, the informal sort of origins, oh, let me just take this off, um, is, um, is something where we were involved in. So it was Dayden's idea, basically. So at ACSP, um, Dayden used to invite scholars, and students who worked on Indonesia, and it was a very small group back then, to go for lunch one day. And it was also open to other, particularly students who were working on the Global South. You know, So that's how it started and the group kept growing, and, but it was consistent. It, we've done this probably every ACSP. So it's kind of like that. So in some ways, it is like the specialty groups within ACSP, like Puig and Poseg and Chipeg. I think what we probably want to do is like how JPEG over the years has now led to the formation of the Global Planning Education Committee, uh, whose co-chair Leslie is here, also Leslie Hui. So, and which is trying to then, I mean, sort of recommend to ACSP as well as to PAB about the globalization of say, planning curricula at US schools and why it's important, all of that. So kind of like that, but eventually, like he said, Maybe the long-term vision is to maybe become like the Urban Affairs Association and have a subscription and circulation of its own in a way. <laughs> yeah. 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 So um, I think I think that's very exciting, and it also I mean you you can see through the the those models like a pathway for your growth and development and influence, and um so so. It, it, currently, it sounds like you're kind of operating and being recognized through ACSP, but you would like to like to be more recognized as an independent organization, more like UAA, right? And um, I think I think that it would be really nice to see you guys uh, consider what kind of active steps you want to take uh, on over the next three to five years to be able to make those changes, right? Like, I think it would be really neat to see um, Ayusa have a post a reception at ACSP, for example, um, because I think that those are uh, wonderful informal ways of gathering people who have an interest, not you, they might not realize the extent to which they want to interact, but it would be a, a nice way to be able to collect interest from those at ACSP. Um, and then I, I would imagine that there are small steps that, that IUSA could take that could raise the profile of the organization, like 
offering non-monetary awards for, for papers um, or non-monetary awards for um, dissertations and master's theses that you know, really elevate um, you know, Indonesian in planning uh, within and for Indonesia in, in the discourse. So um, I, I think it, it, we're, we're all, as academics, we're all drawn to discussing research agendas. It's sort of a natural ingrained thing about us, right? Um, but I think that there's a lot of, there are a lot of practicalities that, um, and logistics that are involved in being able to elevate an organization and with it, have some some political pull in in what you are doing have some political influence in what you're doing thank you jim thanks dean for the opportunity so just uh for those of you who don't mean maybe it's jim spencer i'm a I'm a dean at the Louisiana State University but actually it's great to see many of my former students and, and colleagues from the university of hawaii here um, and also, when Prisa mentioned the first I saw him in 10 years, said, hey, we're starting an a, a, um, uh, Indonesian Urban Studies Association, I was very excited. And actually, the first thing I did is I told Tan, who you referenced, who is an old student from Vietnam who just left to catch his plane, um, why don't we do this in Vietnam? Like, why don't we, why don't, cut? and I told him, I said, come to this and see how it's working and see what we can do in, in Vietnam. And the first thing he said was, oh, the government doesn't approve of that, right? And, and, and I said, no, this is not about a government thing, but it, but it points to the comment that I wanna make here, which is, I think it's great. We, we can model or, or the organizers here can model on UAA, draw from ACSP. And, and the function of that I see is supporting scholars of Indonesia in their professional world, right? Creating a cluster so that when they come up for tenure promotion, they were awarded by the Indonesian Urban Studies Association, da, da, da. it has value in the academy. But as planners, the great thing about being in this field, is, I feel, is, is that we play that game, but we also try to do something out there off campus. In the world, we make changes. And that's something that I think we don't, we don't wanna forget, but also sort of to structure the organization in a way that, that provides um, touch points with government actors, with financial actors, and with community groups. And I think one of the earlier speakers was talking about the unleveraged community leaders that are that are running in Indonesia. And I don't, I won't speak to, you know, to say much that, that I know much about this, but I recognize that that there is a whole range of planning actors that do a lot of good planning that the governments generally tend to never rec recognize. And I know this from Vietnam very, you know, in 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 great detail. And I imagine that that's a very sort of big issue here in Indonesia, but this is an organization that can help connect that, right? And, and, and part of that is, is establishing a trusted relationship with different elements of government, finance, and, and other um, community organizations. So thanks again. Thank you, Jim. Uh, so now maybe we have one more question because Prisa and Bobby, they have their own uh, agenda here in terms of uh, establishing this uh, organization formally. So last question, if you have any comment or question. All right, so if not, oh, yes, Silakan, uh, Paji. Yeah, uh, my name is Aji from ITS. I just uh, have a short uh, question, Pak Deden, yeah, because uh, I know that we have uh, so many times discussion about discussing about the uh, this IUC, uh, IUSA, yeah. And then, uh, my third question is what next to do yeah, after this introduction introduction so i think everyone want to know about the membership everyone want to know about the uh, further activities that we can be uh, collaborate with maybe or maybe any action for direction after this thank you all right thank you Aji. Uh, of course let me say this that uh, we already have some uh, core group i would say right that can get this going and we also also call some uh, Indonesianists who already been committed within with with this group. So uh, we we already have that uh, founding membership just to get this going. But of course, uh, we also open that uh, today. If you like to be part of that founding uh, membership, that way, because as you know, in Indonesia, uh, we like also to register this organization to uh, Ministry of Law. Uh, 
kemen hum kemen hum kam ya that in Indonesia the way we have that uh, uh, establishes uh, authorized organization based based in Indonesia that's something that we are working very soon right and then of course uh, after that we will also share our uh, draft bylaws and then of course we open that membership and then of course we will also have that election uh, for a board of uh, uh, directors and then of course from that we elect uh, uh, chair vice chair treasurers and secretary just like we model uh, what we have in urban urban associations uh, so that's basically uh, the, the 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 next step that we will be doing but at, at this point uh, we just glad that that we are now connected here in in bali and then of course we like to follow up this with the concrete action uh, to get this uh, established uh, formally in Indonesian uh, Ministry of Law, and also uh, we, 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 we try to get this uh, uh, bylaws uh, shared with member, and then we elect a board of directors and chair, vice chair, treasurers, and a secretary. All right, so that's, uh, thank you very much. Let's give all of us a round So now I will uh, get this to uh, Prisa and and Bobby, yeah? Oh yeah, anyone in Zoom attendance, maybe you would like to say something? Maybe. Anybody in Zoom attendance, you like to? Uh, Um, there's just one from um, uh, Ami uh, Baputri. Um, she said, uh, thanks, Siren and Asha for the story of how this began, um, 2007 until today, enduring and intentionalized. I can feel the energy and good luck for the next small and big steps. Um, wonderful organization, Brisa and Bo. All right, thank you, Sarah. Okay, now I will give this to Brisa and Bobby. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Deden, for your uh, sharing the session uh, this morning in Bali. Uh, maybe we have discussed uh, with Riza that uh, at the end of this session, there will be like a declaration of IUSA establishment. So it will be also led by you maybe Mr. Deden to declare our Aisha uh, what is that uh, like a uh, chair uh, Aisha declaration so maybe you can uh, help us to, to declare the foundings of Aisha formally thank you Bobby uh, this is historic moment uh, very honored to have this opportunity to read this declaration and join statement of the establishment of AYUSA, Indonesian Urban Studies Association. With this, on behalf of the Indonesian Urban Studies Association, AYUSA, we declare that today, September 1st, 2022, at the Nusa Dua Convention Center, Bali, Indonesia. AYUSA has been officially established and become an association that we will develop into the best of our capacity for the advancement of cities and regions in Indonesia. We will convey all the founders of AYUSA below. So when I call your name, please uh, move step forward. Uh, Bobby Raman, Riza Mangarindra Putra, Galuh Sabana Indra Prahasta, Tania Benita, Sarah Jasmin Riyadi, Dina Ramadhani, Tessa Talita, Fajar Mardiansa, Paramita Rahayu, Zahra Tusabrina, Wilmar Salim, Ane Nandeta Dwi Cak Sono, Arya Dilan, Muhammad Faisal, Tizar Muhammad Kausar Bijaksana, Reni Bin Yawati, 
Yuni Nurhaya, I think you can move over. Anyone who has been called, please uh, step forward. Agung Rahayu, Dwi Rati Sur Yantining Esti, Agung Mahesa, Aji Pamungkas, Raka Wisnu Suryan Daru, Riala Profi Rianda, Ashok Das, Christopher Silver, James Spencer, Dian Rahmawati, Sunny Roy Chansa, Sonia Roitman. Anyone in this room, your name not been called, but you like become founder of this organization. I invite you to come and put your name down here. And also, we will send you in voice. <laughs> Because everybody here already paid their dues. Okay? So let me call one, two, three. Come on. <laughs> yes. Very good. Very good. Yes. Anyone in this room like to be founding member? Okay. Very good. Very good. This is historic moment. Very nice. Okay, so anyone that not been called, please put your name down here. Me pen, this is Ben. Maybe Pak Deden, we can also give an opportunity uh, uh, from those who are joining from Zoom that cannot yes. attend. Yes, yes. So anyone in Zoom attendance, just put your name on chat box there, and then of course I will put your name down here. It's open to anyone. Okay, so I have Jen Whittington, Dimas Bayu Anindito, Dian Prasetyawati, and Vidya Suryadini. That's the edition from Abdul Malik, Abdul Malik Simon, who else? Pratiwi Putri. Gina, hmm? yeah, yeah, you, you can put your name down here. Bro. <laughs> yes, your name already there. No worries. Okay. All right. So we have uh, forty-one founding members. <laughs> Uh, but then I think you missed one more uh, puzzle results to take note. I think uh, the last one from Zoom that you haven't mentioned. Puzzle results to take note. Puzzle, yeah. Puzzle results to take note. Yes, from uh, Berujaya, right? I think so, yeah. Thank okay, now we much. have a total of 42 founding members of this IUSA. All these names will be listed in our declaration of uh, establishment of this organization. And your name will be also li uh, uh, listed when we submit our uh, uh, application to our Indonesian Ministry of Law to establish this uh, organization officially to the government of Indonesia. Uh, so I think, what should we do now? Take photo group? No, please give your signature. Oh. The next day. All right. All right, so you become witness of my signature here. All right, thank you very much. I think everyone can sign because we have enough space. Yes. Good, anyone can? Yeah. Just put your name and then sign.
And for us in Zoom, of course, we also uh, represent you here and put your name down here. I just called my friend, Mr. Gamal, and he sent regards to you. Hello, what about if he's not here? Can he also yes, yes. put his name there? Di sini dulu, Bu, apa-apa. Ya, kita masih live, so. Ya. Yeah, please stay with us a little bit after this. We're gonna take a group picture, and um, in, still in this historic moment, we'd like uh, you to represent your affiliations, also to send uh, to um, express any comments, any wish for you, sir. Yeah, and remarks as well. And we'll be sending pictures of today to everyone, uh, to everyone's email. And I will be handing uh, some form for you to fill out and okay. <laughs> to pay, but we'll send you a nice uh, seminar kit certificate. <laughs> and also this fancy, fancy shirt of ours, of yeah. course, to your mailing address. Everywhere in the world. Uh, can I just say a little something about you, Priza and Padeden? So um, I want to congratulate uh, the founding co-chairs, uh, Priza and Bobby. I think this is a no small feat uh, on you two. I know, Priza, you're still uh, finishing up. So good luck with that. And I think um, this, um, I think, you know, what you did here today, Priza, holds promise of your bright uh, academic future and also a, a very engaged uh, scholar going forward. And of course, we need to recognize Padeden. This, is, uh, this has been his brainchild and yours as well, Ashok. Um, we in Indonesia, of course, are very proud of Padeden. We cannot be more proud. He is our first export, I should say, to the, to the global uh, to planning scholarship. And it is um, followed by two others that I know of, uh, Professor uh, Rila at Waseda um, and Ari. Ari at Stavanger, yeah, uh, in Norway. And, um, and also uh, Ami uh, in, in Denmark. So, you know, and hopefully, you know, many more will follow uh, his footsteps in exporting, you know, I guess, a planning scholarship across the world. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for very kind, Coco. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's give us a round of applause, everybody. Yes. Uh, so the, the session, the next session will start at 10. 
but of course, like Pizza said, no, that, this room is empty, so we can stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. you can stay, but uh, uh, yeah, but for those who like to join other sessions, just like myself, yeah. so yeah, we is officially the establishment declaration of Ayusa is finished, right? Until we have this group photo, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Yeah. The final remarks. Thank you so much. Let's have a group picture. Okay. Okay. Maybe uh, the one who are joining from Zoom can also uh, get the pictures. Maybe Sarah will uh, give us food to take pictures from Zoom. So, uh, for the one who are joining from Zoom, uh, please open your camera. Maybe so we can take pictures. Thank you. With the photographer, yes. Bisa sini. bisa Okay, I think they are taking pictures. So one, two, three. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, we are still we are still live. Um, if anyone can give some remarks from their uh, representative institution, we will be very we will, we will say it very much. Thank you. Ibu, Ibu, jadi kita masih live. Okay, apa yang ini? Oh iya, iya, habis ini. Habis ini aja ya, bro. Di sini boleh. Ini? Ya, Ibu, Ibu Reni. If you can introduce yourself and you can also share about your organizations, please. Oke, okay, baik. Uh, thank you, uh, Mas Riza and Pak Dede. Excuse me. Hello all. I'm Reni Windiawati from the Ministry of Spatial Planning. Currently serve as the director of Spatial Planning Region One. Also serve as a, as the chair for ITB's Urban and Regional Planning Alumni Organization, where I saw some of our members are actively involved in the preparation of IUSA. So I came here to give my sense, sincere support for them. I warmly welcome to the establishment of IUSA. Which is which I believe will enrich the discourse of urban planning in Indonesia, especially in this very interesting time of the stipulated of the law of cipta kerja. I don't know in English cipta kerja. Yeah. <laughs> so, where the cities and regions are expected to be more open to investment, but also required to safeguard the environment more truly and ensure that everyone has access to jobs public services and amenities. Also, following the discussion, I believe that IUSA could provide a platform of communication for the producer of planners and the user of planner. So I'm looking forward to work hand in hand with IUSA to make our cities better. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here in the declaration of uh, Indonesian Urban Studies Association. So I support it uh, very much, and hopefully, it's uh, this forum will be in the forum for uh, sharing scholars sharing activities and also uh, expanding our knowledge, expanding our capacity in uh, doing the research and 
uh, expanding our uh, global activities related to our careers. Also, uh, collaborating among uh, stakeholders, uh, government and community, private, also other researcher, other school, uh, also uh, advocating for for the government and uh, other institutions for uh, development and the uh, better urban future. I think, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, my name is Aji Pamungkas. I am from ITS, Institute Technology of Sufulu, November, Surabaya. And it is uh, an honor to uh, give a testimony about the introduction of IUSA, Indonesian Urban Studies Association. And we do have uh, to have a further collaboration. So, yeah, we, we have a global network right now in the, in the very close distance. Uh, so... I do hope that uh, in the future we can have more collaboration, both uh, from the diaspora or more for, uh, from the uh, with the Indonesians. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Then that will conclude our uh, session for today. Kang Bobby, mungkin Pak Bobby, can you close the session officially? And we thank you every everyone for your um for coming in and for participating, also for attending. And yeah, we're finishing up here in Bali. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Brisa. Maybe you already ended this session, so maybe you can leave. If the one who wants to leave, you can leave. And it's officially closed, actually. Thank you very much for joining with us today. And see you in the next uh, events and in, in the next occasions. Thank you very much.